Looks like some new slop just dropped, and if you've been around here a while, you know I can't help myself. I need to talk about whatever crap games come out. And what better game to tackle than a supposed Pokemon ripoff? Now the truth is, this is not a Pokemon clone. Now the designs are clearly ripped straight from Pokemon. A lot of them are just amalgamations of Pokemon concepts. And honestly, a huge Pokemon fan could probably make a video breaking down every single stolen part of a model or texture, but I'm not gonna do that. I don't really care, to be honest. I haven't had a personal attachment to Pokemon since Gen 5. And like I was saying before, it's not a Pokemon cologne. It's actually a Arc Survival Cologne, or Rust, or Valheim, or any of these other open world survival crafting games. And I've said this before on stream and possibly in a video, but I really don't like those types of games. So I was pretty much ready to hate this thing before I ever touched it, but honestly I don't. It could just be because I was playing it with friends, but I actually had a decent time playing this game. Now that doesn't change the fact that it looks like a shitty Unreal Engine asset flip, again with the copy-pasted Pokemon designs, and the same survival mechanics you've probably seen a dozen times already. But at the end of the day, it does have a certain charm. Ripping off of Nintendo certainly has its benefits. Honestly, my real problem with this game is twofold. One, the fact that a lot of huge YouTubers and streamers are shilling this shit, pretending that it's not just an early access survival slop game that, again, we've all seen probably a dozen times over the past decade. And this really doesn't offer that much more than those games. And the second thing being that the company that made this game also made Craftopia, a game that is in perpetual early access. Yeah, it's one of those developers, so don't expect this thing to ever be finished. But as expected, the spurging from Nintendo fanboys and AAA developers who are jealous of this game's success actually makes me want to defend it more than it maybe deserves. People think this company should be sued into the ground just because the PALs highly resemble Pokemon designs. Well, copyright law doesn't work that way, not even in Japan apparently, and I don't know why the hell you would want it to. Why do you feel the need to defend a multi-billion dollar corporation? Oh, I know why, because Nintendo is the Disney of video games, they've got a stranglehold on your childhood, and so you take it as a personal slight whenever this corporation is attacked. Even though Pal World doesn't even directly compete with Pokemon, it's not even the same genre of game. So while you certainly could make the argument that it sets a dangerous precedent, that such a blatant early access ripoff clone of all these other game concepts managed to sell 6 million copies already at the time of me recording this, it hasn't even been a week, but given the state of the AAA game industry and even a lot of indie games being complete slop, this is easily a step above most of those games. That said, I think it should be obvious to anybody that this is a flavor of the month game. Everyone's gonna forget about it in a couple weeks, but at the very least it ended up being kind of fun. So, without further ado, here's Pal World. Now, like I said in the intro, this is basically an ARC clone. If you played any of those survival crafting games, it almost feels like a waste of time to explain the mechanics of this because it's so similar, but basically, you build a base, you craft a house, various mining stations. Yes, this is one of those games you're gonna need a shit ton of rocks, wood, ore, etc., 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 to craft various things. Unfortunately, your technology level is gated by your character level, so you're gonna wanna level up, which you can do by capturing pals, fighting pals, crafting things, picking up stuff, pretty much doing anything levels you up. And if you were expecting the combat system to be a Pokemon clone, um, it's not in any way. It's not even a third person shooter like the marketing would have you believe. No, you're just gonna straight up run up to pals and punch them or hit them with a baseball bat or poke them with a spear. And any pals you have captured, you can have one of them help you out in combat. At the very least, there are type weaknesses and resistances, but they're incredibly basic. Every type only has one weakness and one resistance, with the exception of the normal type, which isn't super effective on anything. And the fire type is actually super effective on both grass and ice. 
There's only nine total types, and as you can see from this gameplay, it's also not turn-based, and you can't even tell your pals what move to use outside of their special ability, or if you're mounted on top of them. Yeah, you can ride some of the monsters, and then you can tell them how to fight. But yeah, as you can tell, combat's not all that engaging. Now, something that fans of these survival crafting games will probably enjoy is how much automation there is to building stuff. The pals are just straight up your slaves, and a lot of them aren't really very effective at fighting, but they have special abilities that allow them to mine for you, cut down trees, plant seeds. They can even help craft stuff for you. So that really gives you a reason to try and catch as many pals as possible. Oh, and that just reminds me of another thing. Pals can't even evolve. Yeah, a major fucking mechanic of Pokemon is not in the Pokemon clone. You can actually fuse pals together to make more powerful versions of pals, but there's no synthesis system either, like Shin Megami Tensei or the Dragon Quest Monsters series. It's very strange. Another thing I don't like is the hunger system. It's bad enough when you have to feed your own character, but now you have to feed all the pals as well. This is not a big deal when you're at base because you just build a food pit, basically, and the pals can basically automate the process of filling it with food, so that takes care of itself, but when you're out in the field, especially if you're riding on one of your pals, it can starve pretty quickly, and it's not like it's actually difficult to get food. It's just a chore. That's why I don't like survival mechanics. It just feels like a fucking chore. So ultimately, the gameplay loop is pretty simple in this game. Once you got the base set up, you just go wander out into the world and capture pals or battle ones you find. Strangely enough, there are no trainer battles, which is really weird. No, instead, you just find poachers or PETA. Yes, there's a PETA-type organization, and their AI is exactly the same as the poachers, so they'll actually fucking fight pals out in the wild. Figure that one out. If I didn't know better, I'd say it's commentary on PETA euthanizing so many of its own animals. But no, let's be real, it's just laziness. Out in the sandbox, you can find materials just lying on the ground, obviously, ore deposits and various other resources you might need. There's a few little towns spread throughout the map where you can buy or sell items. You can even buy pals and sell them, which is pretty fucking weird. Again, considering this is supposed to be a Pokemon cologne, but pals are treated as so disposable in this world. And the game even encourages you to catch 10 of the same pal for a huge EXP boost. So yeah, don't expect to get too attached to most of these guys. This is a mistake I see in nearly every Pokemon clone is that you never really get attached to your monsters, which is bizarre considering for me personally, and I have to imagine millions of people that enjoy Pokemon, that's like half the appeal of those games. It's the reason why most people stick with their starter Pokemon from beginning to end. You really get attached to the guys on your team. I didn't really feel that playing this. So you might be wondering, what are the replacements for trainer battles? Well, one, there's many boss fights out in the world where you'll come across a pal that just has way more health and usually a significantly higher level than you are and a really low capture rate. And so you can catch those guys and they have a special symbol on their icon that tells you they're a boss monster and I'm pretty sure boss monsters have better stats and I wouldn't be surprised if they come with better passives as well. There's also dungeons which are probably the laziest looking part of the game. They're procedurally generated rooms that again just look like fucking Unity or Unreal Engine asset flips where you can find a few rare monster types and a boss monster at the end. There's also treasure chests scattered throughout the world, some locked, some unlocked. There's a boss of each region where you go to this huge tower and fight a raid boss inside with your friends. But again, I still have no idea why there aren't just trainer battles. Maybe because this game is so poorly programmed and the combat is so janky, that would probably look really stupid. And somehow I haven't even mentioned the AI, it's probably about as bad as you'd expect. They'll try to attack you through walls. There seems to be something wrong with the aggression system, if there even is one in the first place. 
where the enemies will just lock on to usually the player character if you're playing with friends, one of your friends in particular, and then everyone else can just blast its ass until it randomly decides to attack another player. For one of the mini bosses out in the world, I just crouched on a ledge above it and none of its projectiles could hit me while my pal slowly whittled down its health bar. So yeah, I can't imagine if there were trainer battles that they would be really any more engaging than just beating the shit out of pals or the poachers out in the world. But I have to imagine they're going to add that later down the line. This is early access after all, assuming they actually finish the fucking game, unlike Craftopia. And to briefly talk about the PAL designs, they're definitely a mixed bag. I'd say the best designs are the ones that are blatant ripoffs from Pokemon aesthetics. There was a bit of a controversy that this company is known for using AI, and so allegedly this company used AI to make these Pokemon designs. And so the ones that do just look like an amalgamation of Pokemon you've seen before, those are the ones that look pretty good, but the farther they stray away from actual Pokemon, the shittier they look, for sure. Like, there's this dinosaur that just straight up looks like a plush dinosaur. It looks worse than most fake Mon I've seen. It just looks like dog shit. And so the AI theory seems pretty plausible to me just because it lacks cohesion in the art style. There's also a couple that are blatantly sexual in nature. Which, look, I am not by any stretch a Puritan. I've talked about my Coomerism in the past, but I gotta say, some of these seem kinda in bad taste. Like, the one that is a clone of Salazzle just kinda looks like furry bait shit. And ironically, maybe in how overt it is, it is less suggestively sexual than the actual Salazzle. And don't ask me to explain that, okay? Just trust me. But maybe in the other direction, there's a pal that's supposed to be a genie that is straight up a lolly with a cloud lower half. I'm sure that one's already pretty popular on Rule 34. If I had to pick a favorite pal, I guess I would say Depresso. He's a little dude given the cynical stare and he drinks energy drinks to increase his movement speed. So he's literally me. So overall, I think I'd rate the designs in the just good enough territory. They certainly wouldn't pass for real Pokemon designs, but then again, I'd say the last three generations of Pokemon don't pass as real Pokemon designs. The open world itself is also pretty good and looks visually distinct enough across the regions that I actually kind of like the look. Like I said before, this element of the game is obviously inspired by Breath of the Wild. They even stole the climbing mechanic where you could pretty much just latch onto any wall. And there's a parachute too, but it's way worse. Like, way, way worse. It consumes probably three times as much stamina as the Zelda version. But I think the ability to climb anything instantly makes your world more engaging, at least for me. It does feel a bit empty at times, the enemy density can be quite low in certain parts, and there's way too many repeat pals in certain regions, but there are over a hundred total to catch. There's lucky pals, which are essentially the shinies, they have better stats and better abilities or moves, and there's also subspecies of pals, where they are basically just a palette swap with a different type. Now to get back to the progression system, this is another one of the elements of the game I just don't like. After a certain point, it seems like leveling up slows down considerably. That could just be because I refuse to catch 10 of the same type of pal. But either way, you're going to find this problem where you'll go to a new region to catch more guys and they're just a significantly higher level than you. And so they're going to kill you in one or two hits. And it's kind of hard to progress and it's just boring to catch the same guys over and over again. And like I said before, level gates technology, and technology is where you craft all the cool stuff, like your partner pal abilities. Every single pal has something you can activate with F, whether it's mounting them, or some special combat ability, like the fox you find early on can turn into a flamethrower, which is really good. The chipmunk can use a submachine gun, the monkey an assault rifle. But for a lot of these pal abilities, you actually have to craft an item to unlock that, and that's gated by the technology tree. And obviously, higher level technology trees unlock better gear for your character. There's also quite a few other things I didn't cover, like there's collectibles to find in the open world. 
You can breed pals with each other, much like Pokemon. You can even butcher your pals for materials. Yeah, that's kind of dark. Apparently, you even unlock the ability to enslave human beings and sell them at some point, which I have to admit, sounds pretty awesome. Again, I think you've already played a game like this before. These open world survival crafting games have been popular for like a decade. And Pal World really just doesn't have anything to offer to this formula that's new except the Pokemon gimmick. And I think that's why everyone bought this game, because they just wanted to play another Pokemon-like game. And I'm completely fine with it being in a different genre. I think that is what gives this game its appeal, that it's not another turn-based JRPG. And so, I could go into further detail about certain elements of this game, but I think I'll just get to the conclusion. Should you buy Pal World? Only if you like open world survival crafting games. If you're looking for a Pokemon clone, this is not a Pokemon clone. It's an Ark clone with Pokemon instead of dinosaurs. Now, if you're looking for a casual game to play with three friends, I actually think this is a pretty good choice as long as all four of you are okay with survival mechanics. Even me, somebody who hates survival mechanics, I was able to tolerate this game because the open world is actually alright. I wanted to explore and catch new Pokemon. Even if a lot of the pals seem completely useless, well, you never know until you actually catch them, so it was kind of exciting to find out sometimes. But I guess my ultimate problem with this game, other than it looking like a cheap asset flip, is the progression. I just think so much of this game is locked behind the progression and having pals that are objectively better than other pals with no evolution system kind of ruins a big part of the appeal of Pokemon. And yes, I realize the Pokemon games are not balanced at all, but to me this feels even more severe. A lot of pals just aren't good for anything once you get past a certain point in the game. A lot of the later monsters have better skills. And especially any of the ones that have a really good combat skill are probably the only ones you want to use in combat regardless of type advantage or disadvantage. Now I'm saying this with the disclaimer that I'm not a super high level in the game yet, but there's no way in hell I'm going to change my opinion on this. Even once I unlock a bunch of guns to shoot, it's not really going to change anything. It doesn't feel good as a shooter. It's a jank ass survival game, right? The combat's not really the appeal here. The complete package is, and I guess on some level this is maybe greater than the sum of its parts. I could describe how every aspect of this game is flawed, but at the end of the day, if it's still decently fun, especially with friends, who am I to tell you not to buy this? But you just gotta know, this probably will be in perpetual early access. Despite these devs being Japanese, they seem very Chinese to me, if you know what I mean. So as long as you're okay with the state of the product as is, you can just drop 30 bucks and not feel bad about it, then fuck it, who am I to tell you not to buy this? That said, don't expect this on the top 5 best games of this year. It was an okay distraction, but I think it should be clear to anybody that this is pure, unadulterated slop. Certainly not a replacement for Pokemon, but I doubt anything ever will be. That's about it, see you next time guys.